Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So pink foam board is starting to go in on this module for the OON30 layout. You know, I've got my main big sheet already in place, not glued in. I just set it there, I just cut it. So you can see it's in, it's nice. It uh, fits around the track contours. It's actually got a nice slope going this way. So I can build up additional hills on top of it. Uh, but everything's going to have a nice gentle slope to it, so it should look pretty good when I get done with it. Over here, you can kind of see how I'm uh, going to do this. So I've got pink foam board in position. Nothing's glued down yet. I just kind of set it there. So from this portal, you know, I will do some carving. I'll add some sculpt mold. I will then paint everything a dark color, probably a black with maybe a little bit of brown highlights near the portal. Then on this, I will get, uh, again, I've got a variety of, uh, you know, commercial trees that I'll put in. It doesn't make any difference for size. It's just to sort of add that perception that it's going into a, a dark forest. Same thing over on this side. I'll start up near the portal and I'll run that around to near the point here so that from different positions that you're looking in, you're going to see a line of trees. Then when I get all of that done and scenic, then I will put in this piece, which will fit on top there. That aligns with the next section and I can do scenery. Uh, you know, all of this is still gonna be open from the middle. So if I happen to have any issues, I'm gonna be able to come in from underneath and take care of it because there's gonna be where the foam uh, board starts. Everything else is gonna be open. So I'm not gonna have a lot of weight on this module. Uh, there's going to be probably at least one, maybe two layers of foam board over most everything and a few other areas build up so that I've got a good solid base for the trees. You know, the, the foam panels will be glued into place using adhesive. And, uh, you know, this, this, this ought to work. Uh, in fact, what I'm using is liquid nails and it's kind of hard to see, but I got one over there and that's about empty. So I got to buy some more, but I'm just cutting some foam board tonight and fitting it and getting ready for the next steps. So uh, let's see what else I can get done here. So Friday evening, and I have not done a whole lot out here for a couple of days. I uh, did not have any adhesive and I have uh, solved that. And right now, that top piece, I'm letting the adhesive sit because it's uh, sort of pressed into place a little bit. So I want it to keep its shape. These uh, chunks of foam board have not been glued in, but I've been just sort of setting them out to get a feel for how I want the shape of the scenery in here. Because this is the scene between the center module and you know, on this side, it's the uh, left module. And I want to make that hill look reasonably continuous across. How I'm going to hide the seam in this area once I get to it is I'm going to make a, sort of a, a gully similar to what I've got here. I can have it so that it's sort of jumbled. Uh, one of my viewers gave me an idea about using uh, like saran wrap. Now I had been using wax paper on different things, but I'm gonna try the saran wrap because as he pointed out, it can form fit. So I've still got some work to do on this side, but I can put some saran wrap like right here. I can build this piece out to the middle. It's not gonna stick to this side. And then once that kind of cures, I can take and maybe use the same piece of saran wrap or get another, put it in again, press it off over this side and then do this part of the scenery. So I'm gonna give that a try. So what I'm gonna do yet tonight is I'm gonna glue these up and uh, continue to work around. I've got a little bit of pink foam board left. I am gonna have to get some more. So I'll get those glued. I'll redo this area a little bit. I'm gonna put like a culvert here. Uh, the track just naturally kind of comes to the end, so I can put uh, some uh, details on this without actually needing to cut anything out, at least on this side. I might do a little trim over on this side to kind of bring it up, but uh, I can do that even with it in place. That's not a big deal, but I will probably do that before I put a whole lot down here just so I can get access. But uh, we're making progress. We'll uh, see what I can get into as we go through the weekend here. Still Friday night, gotta love construction. Uh, everything that's up there is now glued. I'm leaving some of the clamps in just to let the adhesive set overnight uh, so it gets a good bite. These pieces I'll be using oh, back there. 
as you can see, I've got kind of a cliff that's going to go around. I will continue that on the other side of that divide, kind of hide a little bit. And I dug out a whole bunch of uh, commercial trees that uh, some look okay, some look ugly. Uh, I will make them look decent to uh, hide in the shadows as the forest gets thick, but that'll come maybe later in this video yet. We'll see. Well, Saturday afternoon and uh, was on back on track uh, this morning. Had a great time with uh, all the guys on there. Good conversation, <laughs> a lot of fun. So I'm not making much progress today, uh, at least not like what I wanted. I went to uh, both home centers that are real close to me here and they did not have the one inch uh, pink foam board, which is what I prefer to use on this one. Just easier to work with, it's a little more flexible, but it's thick enough that like the three quarter inch, uh, you know, you can poke a tree all the way through it. So didn't have any, but I've got a few pieces. So I'm gonna go and start working on the uh, other side of the backdrop there. And I should be able to put in a few, uh, like I was talking about, I think in the last segment, so I can sort of continue this look uh, a little bit farther around. So I'm going to start doing that. Uh, I've been outside for a while. Uh, I've been enjoying a beautiful Saturday here in Richmond, Virginia, but it's time to play on the layout. So later in the afternoon, now on Saturday, I've uh, been in and out uh, doing stuff in the yard and playing on the railroad. So I'm ready to uh, do a little bit of foam carving. I'm just gonna kind of get rid of the uh, more angular look. Got my uh, hot wire uh, foam knife there. And then I'll go on the other side <clears throat> and do the same thing. I will be able to kind of get rid of the corners, uh, the sharp edges on uh, areas where I've got the pink foam board. So get that done and then we'll take a look at it and see how it looks. Next batch of uh, tree trunks are coming along too. So I've got the uh, trunks uh, glued together and uh, I can start adding the uh, wood glue and the ground foam to make basically bark covered trunks. Uh, and I'll be working in conjunction with doing pink foam board work. Well, late Saturday evening and I've got basic shapes cut, you know, just took the uh, sharp edges off, did the same thing on the other side of the portal. A uh, little bit over here, nothing major. The rest of that I can fill in with sculpt mold and make it look decent. But uh, first I'm gonna work on trees a little bit more. And then a little bit later tonight before I wrap it up, I might get the uh, sculpt mold out and start on the back side there. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out here. Well, early Sunday afternoon and uh, making some progress. Still don't have any additional pink foam board, but I got out the sculpt mold and just starting to get uh, that put into place. Uh, places where I've got sculpt mold that are gently sloping, like on the left side of the uh, blue tape covered track. I'm not gonna add any additional plaster. Uh, that's just gonna be covered with ground cover. So when I get over on this side that I start to uh, have some vertical, I'll start to do cliffs, but again, uh, that's a little ways down the road because I've got more to do. But I'm also running out of sculpt mold. <laughs> Used almost all of my 25 pound box. I've got enough to do on the other side of the portal and maybe a little bit more, and that's gonna be it. So I'm gonna have to order some more, but uh, I'll get a little bit farther today and then I can start uh, transitioning over to making the uh, ugly commercial trees not so ugly and uh, kind of start doing scenery on the back side of that uh, portal. A little later Sunday afternoon, and I am now out of sculpt mold as well. <laughs> uh, so I've got basically the first coat on. I will come back in some areas and I'll add more to kind of uh, smooth out and lessen the slope a little bit. I got that back area with enough, so I am going to go back there like I said I was. Uh, Got a little bit more carving to do there, then I can finish that once I get more sculpt mold. But uh, yeah, this is gonna look okay. You know, the next layer of sculpt mold will help level out, and all of the little imperfections will be covered by uh, ground cover 
Uh, so I don't really care if I got little bumps there. I'm going to paint them. They will all blend in and make a lumpy topography and uh, surface feature. So I'm good with that. But uh, you can see how this is kind of looking. So I will uh, start doing some of the stuff with the commercial trees here after a while. And I can start doing some more then on that back area. So that'll be the next thing that I'm going to tackle. So I've got the stain on for the uh, landscape that uh, is on the other side of this portal here. So I'm letting it soak for just a minute or so. And then I've got uh, my uh, wad of paper towels and I'm going to go in and blot it off. Not going to blot it off excessively on this side. I, again, I want it to stay kind of on the dark because uh, it's going to be in the shadows. And then I can start uh, doing some ground cover and uh, putting some trees in. Ground cover is on. Uh, and this one, I'm just using earth. I'm not going to use any greens. I want it, again, to be on the dark side. So now I can start uh, working on some of the uh, commercial trees that I still have. I can start planting them and then add additional uh, ground cover in and around. And uh, I can start doing some other things back here. So I think this is going to work. I just set the uh, top piece on temporarily. I do have to stain, oh, if you can see it like that, one by two. I'm going to have to stain that, that uh, ebony, just to kind of make it hide a little bit. The uh, area in the back will get darker as I uh, put the fascia on, but if you can see past the tree block that's going to be here, sort of over this, uh, you'll see a few hints of trees in the background as the train kind of goes in and around. So I think that's going to work. We'll uh, move on to do some other things and uh, come back to this a little bit later. I'll show you from the other side real quick, though. And I'll take the top off. And then uh, there's how the scenery looks underneath. You know, once I put this back on and basically glue it in place, it's never coming off again. But I can still get access to it from uh, the center if I need. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to look okay. But you can see here, I've got to stain this, that uh, ebony. And I need to kind of stain that little piece of that right there and here, just so that from different angles that you're looking at it, you're not seeing the board easily. Uh, a lot of trees will be blocking this, so you might not even see hardly anything in here. But if you do, you're not going to see the one by 2 so yeah, this is going to work. All right. Well, late Sunday evening, and I am starting to make uh, a couple of deciduous trees. Uh, so some fairly big ones. So I'm using white, or not white, I'm using carpenter's glue to uh, glue the grapevine wire on a uh, stick trunk, basically. And this is the uh, same grapevine wire that I've been buying at Hobby Lobby, except that it's uh, rope color. No big deal. Again, I'm going to paint it, so uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, once this sits overnight, uh, tomorrow night I'll be able to come in. I'll be able to then bend it into some different shapes, and then I'll cut some additional sections to kind of make thicker trunk or thicker branches, <clears throat> make the trunk look like it's in a decent shape. Then I'll use more of my carpenter glue and some of the ground uh, cover and go from there to kind of start getting it some shapes and then uh, building some of these trees. These two will be used to uh, start the camouflage process on that portal that I've been working on. Uh, a little farther on the trunks. So down at the base where the uh, core is, you can kind of see it even in my shadow there. I've got the glue all the way around and then uh, ground foam on it to start building it up. This I will let sit overnight and I've got a pile of uh, essentially additional twigs that I'll start once I get it separated, I'll put them in the center, start to build up individual limbs coming off these, you know, three or four or five, and then a, a little bit coming up uh, higher. So uh, we'll see how this looks. These take a while. Uh, the pine trees, I can whip through those fast. This will take several evenings to uh, even do a couple uh, of this complexity. But uh, I'll give you snippets as we go on uh, the process. So Monday night after work, 
and not doing a tremendous amount out here, but I did put in the very first uh, of the super trees that I'm going to use to uh, sort of block the portal. The uh, bigger trees that I'm working on are going to go off on the side here and over there, but this is the first batch that just sort of hides the uh, arch, and uh, right now it's pretty effective. You know, you look under, you can still see because I don't have the fascia on, but you can tell there's a continuation. So this is, uh, this is okay. There will be a lot more trees along here, more trees all the way through here, uh, you know, trees in through here and up in here, up until about where this little gorge is, then I'll have a break. So that should effectively block the view going this way and most of these other directions. You'll see the train going in, but then it should disappear before I even get to the arch, which is what I'm after. Over on this side, should be the same thing. You know, there'll be trees there, a little gap here, uh, more trees here. So if you're looking at it from this end, again, it should disappear. You know, so the only time when you might see a little bit is gonna be here, but there'll still be some trees coming along here, hanging over. So if I do this right, we're not even gonna know that there's a portal there until the train just disappears completely. But we'll see. Uh, some things I'm going to start on here pretty soon is I will get some plaster out so I can kind of plaster this area and right in here and I can do a little bit of carving to align with over here. So I can do a few things uh, even as I'm waiting for some other materials. So uh, now I'm going to turn my attention to the bigger trees and uh, continue on those. Starting to take shape. Got the central cores in. That's where I've got the twist tie and I've sort of pulled some of the branches out. I will uh, trim those more once the uh, glue all sets and I'm ready to go on to the next step. But uh, still got a lot of work to do on these. It's going to be at least another couple of evenings before I'm ready to do some final assembly and painting. So these are starting to come along. Uh, still working on them. Putting on layers of the wood glue. Building up some of the trunk pieces yet. But... Um, I think probably tomorrow night I will be able to start the next step on this. I'll be able to add a few more uh, layers of glue yet this evening before I wrap it up, but uh, these will be a couple of nice old trunks with lots of foliage on them. So this last few segments on uh, this episode are going to be making a deciduous tree. So I've been showing uh, the few clips as I've been working on these, like this is going to be an old oak tree or something similar. But I've also made a series of uh, smaller trunks about like this. Kind of looks like a uh, painted firecracker, actually. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to marry this trunk to this super tree material. You know, I'll get it up here, and I will have a nice O-scale size tree that will be roughly, oh, it looks like about 10 inches tall. I'm going to kind of go through a few steps on how I make it, uh, and then kind of skip uh, once I get uh, a little bit farther along to the, the finished product, but it's easy. So this is made out of the uh, grapevine wire, rustic wire, three strands, uh, two that are smaller, one that's longer. On this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put heat shrink, a uh, quarter or eighth inch tubing. And you can see right here on uh, this particular container. I bought a roll of 100 feet of it. I've been using this for all of the trees that I've been making. I got a lot left. I got enough to last me years of tree making. So what I'm going to do is I put this on over the rustic wire and it fits on it really well. I will slide the uh, trunk in here. I will then uh, actually glue the trunk before I get here and it will go down and I'll make sure that it lands on the rustic wire. I'll actually trim this piece down a little bit and then super glue it. I'll heat shrink it together and then I can uh, paint it. Or actually then what I'll do is I'll rub some more glue on this and then uh, make it look like the trunk. But uh, we'll skip ahead a little bit here and I'll show you what we're doing. Gently rub so that I get a good fit. And that heat shrink sets around the stem. Doesn't need a lot. I'm using my old soldering iron just to make sure that I get a good bite. And 
All right, so I will just let this sit for a little while. All right, there's my basic tree shape. Now I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna put some glue over this and then sprinkle some ground foam on it so that it matches with the others. Okay, basic tree shape is done. What I'm gonna do is I'll let this dry for a little bit. Then I will take it out and I will paint it same camo brown that I've been using for others. And then I am uh, ready to flock it. I'll be able to flock it yet before uh, tonight's over. All right, this tree is ready for uh, final action here. Put the glue on, put the ground foam on, painted it brown, painted the uh, top the canopy uh, mostly brown. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna use the uh, Woodland Scenics blended turf. I've got my hairspray ready. Next shot, we'll show a completed tree. And there is the tree. It is finished and in a position. I don't know that it's gonna stay there. I will uh, put the bigger ones in once I get those built. And then I will start to cluster other trees around them. So this one's in here temporarily at this point. I will also uh, paint uh, so I can start to put trees in here. I'll get the plaster out and do more there. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna move that one, but you can just see. Quick and easy little tree. Again, scaled for O scale. So uh, fits in with the landscape, looks pretty good. And with that, that's gonna do it for this video. So uh, take care and keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.